afternoon from Cappadocia. We had a very long and uncomfortable bus ride overnight from Antelli to Cappadocia. I would say it was probably our least favorite one so far. Would you agree? I would 100% agree. Up to now, the bus services actually have been pretty good in Turkey so far. But I think we ended up getting a new guy at work who was very, very conscious of not trying to bend the rules. And so we got assigned different seats, but previously that's never been a problem. We've been able to sit together, but this guy wasn't having it. So he came over twice, said that we had to move. We then ended up moving together to a seat that had basically no leg room. So it meant that as a man of my dimensions, I had the least comfortable night's sleep on a bus that I've ever had, and that's saying something. And uh, so, yeah, as soon as we got into our accommodation, then the first thing on the agenda was a very long nap. Yeah, we arrived at about 7.15 this morning, and thank goodness they had our room ready for us. So we took a nap until about noon, and then the lady at our accommodation graciously gave us some coffee as well as some crackers and cookies and we munched on those. Yep. We have been out to the grocery store to grab food for dinner. We have been to the bank because we had to pay her in cash. And we thought we weren't really gonna be able to do too much today because it was chucking it down. Yep. But as you can see, the weather has completely changed. It is now super sunny and warm, and I hope it stays this way. So we have decided to go to the Gorham Open Air Museum, which is, I think, one of the most major tourist highlights, if not the most. And that's where we're walking to now. I think it's about a 25 minute walk from our hotel. Probably another 10 minutes on from here, so we're starting to see it. We just paid 300 liras each to get into the Gorham Open Air Museum, and that works out to be about $22 Canadian. We have just been inside St. Basil's Chapel, and we're not allowed to take photographs inside or video. I don't know if that's going to be a theme going forward with the entire open air museums. We might just be able to show you exterior videos. However, what I did want to tell you was what we saw inside. So first of all, there are two tombs and you could see such well-preserved human bones lying out. That sounds really creepy, but it wasn't. As well, they had all of these very primitive frescoes on the walls and they were just beautiful to see. The color is still pretty vibrant and it was all religious in nature. It's amazing to think that nearing on about a thousand years ago there were people who actually lived in each of these rock formations yeah. and it's kind of amazing because clearly they had such a good knowledge of the geology of this place to know okay this is actually fine for carving this will actually be okay to the point where it's not going to collapse on us or anything like that so they knew which bits were safe which bits they could use also it was just a very clever way of making sure that you had a safe settlement well because fundamentally, unless anybody wants to really climb up here, no one's going to try and attack this place and everybody's very safe. And if you wanted to try and get even safer, you could just burrow even deeper and deeper and deeper into the rocks. With this area, there's a number of also underground cities, which are up to sort of eight stories deep. And really that's kind of testament to how people lived here. It's just amazing to think that this was where a decent handful of people used to live and pretty much kind of everything that they've managed to create was something that they worked with the geology of the place on. Yeah and I think it's incredible how well preserved it is mm. but it makes sense okay. because the caves are very dark and cool so of course it would last. Mm -hmm. I think we're now going to go explore something called the dark church. 
it is an extra 100 lira to get into, but everyone we have talked to has said how worthwhile it is. So let's go. So the reason it's called a dark church is for no other reason than the fact that basically there was very little natural light that would come in. There was basically one little niche of a window and that was the only way that you could get sunlight into that church. For that reason, all of the frescoes and all of the artwork is still practically immaculate. There's a little bit of wear and tear, but honestly, especially when you look into the ceilings, it's all there. Everything is still very much intact and there is so much artwork. It's basically floor to ceiling, which considering in fact it's a really small little space, was just incredible. Had you told me that this was only maybe about 100 years old, I'd have turned around and probably believed you because honestly, that's the level. Everything was still so incredibly vivid and yeah just really got kind of a sense of the majesty of the place and exactly how it was intended to be so it was 100 lira each to go in on top of your ticket so that's like what seven dollars and fifty cents yeah and it's only for a five minute visit but really it is a very well spent 100 lira it's the most well preserved part of the museum yeah and you get a sense of what it would have looked like when you go into the other churches and see the frescoes. Mm -hmm. But this gives you a real taste of what it looks like back in its heyday over a thousand years ago, did you say? Yep, people were living here in the 11th century, so it's about a thousand years old. So you're probably wondering what is the deal with this place like you got all these really weird rock formations and a lot of the buildings and things that seem to be carved into them are all very religious so it's either like nunneries or monasteries or churches i know i was definitely wondering why i was seeing so many religious buildings indeed so we had a look in terms of the geological history of this place, then this started getting formed about 60 million years ago due to volcanic activity in the region. There's about three different major volcanoes in this area that then all started to erupt over time. And then that built up layers of ash and soft volcanic rock. That then meant that because of the fact that that rock was soft, then it was very easily erodible. So as a result, any wind or rain damage then started to carve out little niches and things like that in the rock as well. This is something that people also discovered as well, that it was easily carvable, but would also be steady enough to then be able to support roofs and things like that without collapsing. So as a result, religious communities around here, especially during the Byzantine era, which was still very much Christian predominantly, settled here in the early centuries AD. So. Yeah, I think they said the first community was in the second century AD and they thrived until I think the fourth century AD. Exactly. Over time, then they started to create more and more buildings here. That became especially prevalent and a lot of the geology of this area became particularly important during the time of the Byzantine and Arab Wars, which I think spanned about three to four hundred years during the 8th and 12th centuries AD. During that time, Christians in particular were targeted and very much persecuted, and so therefore places like this and a number of underground cities in the Cappadocia region ended up providing a really amazing sanctuary for them and the perfect hiding spot. If you're wondering 
why we didn't show you some of the insides of these churches and monasteries and nunneries, it's because you can't take videos or photos inside them and there are people sitting there making sure that you don't. And I understand the reason why. A lot of the frescoes that you see on the inside of these buildings are pretty well preserved, mostly because of the fact that it's all carved into caves. So they're very cool and dark. So just lasted naturally. And by not taking photos and videos, they are helping to preserve it for longer so everyone can enjoy it. But if you do come here, what you will find is incredible frescoes inside all of these buildings. They tend to use very similar colors like orange, yellow, blue, and black. You were saying it's probably like all paint colors created from natural materials, which yep. makes 100% sense. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely Christian artwork. It's absolutely beautiful to see. This was so different than anything I've ever seen before. This wasn't like any mosques I've been into, any cathedrals, any churches, any other Roman or Greek cities. This is a first for me. And it was incredibly eye-opening and fascinating. Just wow. Yeah, this is completely unique. I, I've i never seen anything like this. Yeah, I, unique to this area. Yeah, the very fact that we've even been able to come here to be able to see this has already been a joy. We were, like, with the weather as it was when we first came in, where the heavens were starting to open and we maybe were thinking of maybe not even coming here today, then I'm really glad that the weather held out so that we were able to see all of this. I mean, obviously, the fairy chimneys and the other geological formations and things like that are the main reason why people come here but obviously getting to go inside a religious community is so special absolutely like, yeah because not only are you getting in touch with just being able to see the natural history of this but you're also mm -hmm. getting to see the people history which yeah is fantastic i think we should head back to our hotel before the skies open because it is no longer sunny oh. It is gray and yep. we have a 25 minute walk ahead of us. Yep, let's head back. We made it back to our hotel just in time, or not even just in time because it definitely started raining while we were walking back from the open air museum. We had to don our ponchos and we had to hang up some of our clothes because they got a little wet. So that was fun. So we've just been hanging out in the hotel room doing some editing and I don't think either one of us thought we had enough footage for a video. No, I was expecting that we'd have to clip this in with whatever we're doing tomorrow, but it turns out that this is more than enough. So Hence why we're signing off. Indeed. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon from Cappadocia. We had oh, just tripped.